We have the famed economist Stephen Roach joining us uh, this morning live in our Hong Kong studio, and it's good to see you back in the Great city. Great to see you, Susan. You miss it here sometimes? I do. Okay, well, you know, we're going to start first talking about to the U.S. now, your home, of course, uh, but uh, given that you're thinking that the American consumer is not okay, th why is it that it seems like a lot of the indicators we're getting and a lot of people are thinking that the U.S. economy is back on solid footing? Well, you know, they want to believe, and I can appreciate that unbridled optimism, but, but you know, you got to be fact-based in coming to these conclusions. So you look at the last 21 quarters, beginning in the first quarter of 2008, the average annual growth rate of inflation-adjusted consumption tries 0.9%. Mm -hmm. This is 70% of the economy. The pre-crisis trend for 12 years was 3.5%. Well, so that, also... that's the, the weak recovery in a nutshell. But, you know, if, if consumers, the consumer is so weak in the U.S., in the last non-farm payrolls report, most of those jobs were added came from the retail space. Well, this is a sector that has been pushed way, way down as consumers have delevered and restrained from, uh, from, from spending and trying to repair their balance sheets and, re and rebuild savings. And so now there's some repair going on, and so the, the sector is attempting uh, a modest recovery. But stress the word modest. The unemployment rate is still 7.6% mm -hmm. the last time I checked, despite all this hiring. Well, yeah, more people entering the work workforce, as I say, at least they're not being discouraged from trying to find jobs once again. 7.6%, Susan, you know, you can't spin it into a, a positive number. <laughs> well, the White House does. Well, um, they get paid to do it, That's right? true. Okay, so what about tapering? Because I think consensus now is September. We're going to get that announcement. I don't know. I think the, the Fed is pretty clear that they want to stay weaker for longer uh, to make certain that the economy is really on a sustainable, acceptable recovery path with respect to unemployment. Mm -hmm. And unemployment at 7.6 is a long ways away from what they would consider to be complete. So I, I think uh, tapering is, at, at this point, being overblown as a near-term But do you think phenomenon. tapering is going to happen this year, 2013 I, I calendar? Yeah, pretty, there'll, there'll probably be some nod in that direction. The markets are already moving mm -hmm. to anticipate that, given the, the backup in uh, longer-term interest rates. Yeah, well, you see that in the Treasury space. So what about the market action? What do you think of it so far? What do you make of it as a market? Point? Markets are a lot stronger than the underlying economy, so one or two things is going to have to happen. You know, the markets are going to go back to a, a more tepid recovery or the, you know, the, the, the economy is going to pick up. Yeah, okay. Well, let's bring it back here to the Asia Pacific because, you know, I, I don't think we saw any movement really from the U.S. side. Gains and losses, not much yeah, uh, motivation. Yeah. But here in the Asia Pacific, I'll tell you what the story is. And it's Japan for the, uh, well, for the year so far. And, we, you know, when you stomach a ride of 5% yesterday, I think the biggest rally in two years, and then one day it's down 7%, close to being bear market. What, what, have you seen that before in Tokyo? Look, it's been a series of lost decades, and you got uh, Shinzo Abe promising to end it with aggressive um, uh, quantitative easing, fiscal stimulus, uh, and this uh, vacuous uh, 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 structural third arrow that has yet to be uh, specified. We'll see if he can deliver. Yeah. I'm a skeptic. You're a skeptic? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't believe that quantitative easing is a recipe to repair fundamental problems in your economy. And if you don't address the fundamental problems, you can do all the quantitative easing in the world. It's like a sugar high. It works for a while, but then it wears off. Uh, Stephen, okay, well, I guess this hinges, the uh, weakness in the Aussie dollar also hinges on the weakness that we're seeing in the Chinese economy because they're so correlated. But you're saying with the Chinese data, don't pay attention to what you saw over the weekend. Susan, the, Ch the Chinese economy is not weak. It's not surging open-ended at 10%. Uh, and there's a lot of volatility, especially on the export-import side, from April to May. But while the growth rate has slowed somewhat, we're talking about numbers in the 7.5% zone, the important thing is the mix in the economy. It's shifting away from the old model, mm -hmm. which is manufacturing, exports, external demand, to the new model, which is services, uh, and consumption. So you look at these trends, and whether it's services or retail sales, right. they're outperforming the rest of the economy. I'll, tell you, you, I'll tell you the argument that a lot of people talk to me about with China, because I think you're saying that China is going more towards a pro-consumption economy, but to Jim Chanos and all the rest tell me that consumption as a part of GDP continues to decline each and every year in China. So is that really happening, that shift? No, and, and you know Jim probably needs to update that every once in a while by going to China, but which is something he refuses to do. Correct. Um, the, con the consumption share is growing rapidly, but it has not been growing rapid as rapidly as the export uh, and the investment sector. So it does 
hold at a very low level of 35 percent of, of the GDP. Mm -hmm. But by focusing on urbanization, where the Chinese families earn three times their counterparts in the, in the countryside, by focusing on the services sector, where mm -hmm. there's much more jobs per unit of GDP, right. and the safety net, the early stages of this shift are now underway. But that's why I guess in some ways you don't look at the export import numbers that we got over the weekend, right? Like the No, I look at them because they're still they've historically been an important part of this 30-year growth miracle uh, and they they have slowed, but how much of that is China? How much of that is their external demand in Europe and the United States? Mm -hmm. Well, no one's touching Chinese stocks this year. That's understandable. Well, that's been the case for several years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this has been a very you know the worst performing major stock market in the world uh, in, in the world for the last six years. Right. And so, if you were to have money invested in, in the markets right now, where, where would you be putting your cash? You know, all those dollars that you have saved up. Yeah, from right. All the years that I used to have family. saved up. Yeah, yeah, all those years. Mm -hmm. I'm still a big believer in Asia. I'm a big believer in the, in the long-term shift to more of a consumer-led growth model across Asia, but especially in China. And I think as the uh, the, the trends play out, that that will uh, you'll look back on that in historic terms as a real opportunity for long-term investors. All right, uh, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And I know Good you had you. a great trip to Chengdu, saw the yeah, pictures of the great. pandas, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you again pretty soon. Look forward to it All as right. always. Thanks, Stephen Roach of Yale University.